Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Goodykant, Superintendent of Schools. There has been a lot in the news recently about issues of gender equity and sexual assault and harassment. Here locally in the Needham Public Schools, we have been focusing on the issue of equity generally, including gender equity and inclusion. I think it's a critically important conversation for us to have, especially in a school community which prides itself in making sure that we provide a safe and supportive learning environment for all of our students and staff, especially for our young women. Joining me today to discuss these issues are several faculty members and students. I'd like to welcome uh, Katie, faculty members Katie Clayton, Teresa Levy, Mary Jane Walker, Sarah Nichols, Ali Cooper Argentari, and Liz Cox. And I'd also like to welcome some juniors, Emily Rocket, Alu Ajahi, and Caroline Conkergood. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Katie, if I may, I, may I ask you to share with us what prompted a recent moment of solidarity among our faculty? So um, the weekend prior to Monday, September 24th, uh, I received a email communication from the Time's Up movement, um, which was formed in the wake of the sexual allegation um, allegations against Harvey Weinstein and um, they had publicized a moment of solidarity and this was during the Kavanaugh hearings <clears throat> and I had been thinking a lot about everything that was going on in the news with those hearings and I was thinking about myself and I was also thinking about what my students might be thinking about um, all of the news that was swirling um, and I decided I really wanted to participate in that moment of solidarity somehow. Um, and looking at the logistics of when the moment of solidarity was going to occur, it was supposed to happen at 1 p.m. Um, and realized that that was probably going to be pretty challenging to do, given my responsibilities as a teacher. Um, but I reached out to some of my colleagues and my friends, and um, they were interested in participating in some way. Um, and then that message was shared with more uh, female faculty members and um, some staff as well. And there was a huge amount of support and enthusiasm about participating in some way, in a way that made sense given um, our responsibilities during the day to the students. And um, we all communicated and decided on um, joining and taking a photo in the spirit of the moment of solidarity before school and then walking um, into the school as a unified group. Um, and we talked a lot about what the goal and the purpose of it was. And I think for, for me and for all of the women who were joined on those stairs on the Monday um, morning, it felt important to do something because those accusations were about a 15 year old towards a 17 year old and um, that's who we walk into our classrooms to teach and it just felt very important to let our students know that we would hear their stories um, and that sexual assault is not okay um, and so so the the sentiment behind that moment was to stand together and to stand up for um, that important movement. And, and as I understand it, as you're saying, to, to be a supportive role model and, and models for, for the young women and young men of, yes. of Needham High School. And, and it became emotional because everyone is impacted by this issue on some level. Yeah. And so there was a lot of personal connection so for some people. A lot, a lot going on with that. Yeah. So uh, Caroline, <clears throat> um, Alu, Emily, um, this was in, in part meant to show students that, that the faculty was, was making a stand in support of you and, and, and your peers. Did any of you, were you aware of this moment of solidarity, heard about it? Um, I saw it happening, like I was walking into school and the first person that I saw was actually Ms. Clayton. And um, someone, I don't remember which teacher, asked me about it uh, during my first period class. And I, we just kind of talked about it for a little while. I think it was my history teacher. And I just thought it was really cool. Like a lot of the girls in my class too were like, wow, like I didn't, like, he, I didn't see it, but like now hearing about it, that's like something really interesting. So why is it important to hear something like that at school from, from your faculty? 
and, and I'll open it up to Emily or, or Caroline, and then we'll, we'll have more conversation. But why, why would that be important? You said that was almost empowering. What, why? I thought it was extremely empowering because um, I have very close friends in which they've been um, personally affected by these issues, as well as um, I have also been personally affected by um, sexual harassment. And um, I found that it was very empowering that there was such a strong and loud voice again, um, behind the teachers and the female teachers that were uh, able to stand up and um, to participate in this moment of silent be silence because, um, yeah, it just gave such a strong hope for women and that we are being heard and that it's, uh, that we're not alone in this fight and that um, the school is uh, going with it and they're trying to do everything that they can so that um, we stop this and create an awareness of the issue at hand. Caroline, do you echo that? Is there anything that... Um, yeah, I think it's also important to note that for me personally, a lot of my teachers and a lot of them sitting here are my biggest role models in terms of coming to school and they would be the people that I would go to um, in terms of incidents like this. And so going off of what they said, it is really empowering to see these people as human and standing up for what they believe in and not just teachers. You know, as I, as I learn more about the, the moment of solidarity, and it, it certainly was, was prompted in part by this issue of sexual assault and, and harassment, um, it also is tied into gender equity and, and inclusion. And I, I guess my, my question following up on that is, and this is really for, for all of you, is, you know, are there some things that you have seen in this high school or your experience in the Needham Public Schools um, that, or in, in the classroom, uh, or on the field, or on the stage, whatever, that might suggest there is an imbalance or an inequity uh, between um, the young women and young men of Needham High School as students. What does that look like? I mean, there's a definite imbalance in even some of the sports, such as um, like the rugby teams, for instance, they have been pushing the, um, the boys' rugby team for a while to become a full team instead of like a club sport. And they were able to receive their uniforms and to have school funding uh, well before the girls um, had a team and were able to start practicing and have field time, as well as just different instances throughout like the school day and um, yeah, throughout like different uh, times, like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Um, there's a lot of different times that I've witnessed it personally. Are there other examples that any of our teachers can think of that, or is it a level playing field? I mean, would you say that? I think it would be hard to say it would ever could be a level playing field, especially when there's gender inequity in our society. And we become sort of a microcosm of that here in Needham High School. I and mean, I found that my uh, many times my female students are much more engaged or interested in talking about issues of gender. And that sometimes my male students kind of groan or don't really seem to be visibly as interested in talking about it. And, and what, why is that? What do you think? I think that kind of comes from maybe their own comfort level or a privilege of like, why do we have to talk about that? Like, that's not something that I feel like I have to worry about. Mm -hmm. And that may be true for them. And so I think that it's important for us as gender dynamics are changing in our society and in our world that we're having those conversations at the high school level um, and throughout Needham Public Schools to make sure our students are ready for life outside of, um, outside of, you know, the school day, but also <laughs> outside of Needham High School and beyond. Yeah, I do want to talk about what are some of those things we can be doing, but what, what else have you seen as, as teachers or instructors? Last year, um, several of us ran a session during our one day, which was about identity, and our session was about the experience of being a woman, I think we, uh, like in 2018, <clears throat> particularly with the Time's Up movement and Harvey Weinstein and kind of the fallout of the um, previous presidential election, and throughout the course of the um, session, we asked a lot of survey questions. So we sort of kind of set it up and then we let the students guide the discussion. And we asked a lot of questions of what pressures do you feel in society, being a woman, 
Um, and then how, how do you feel that potentially in Needham High? And it was eye-opening. There were a lot of comments about um, what would be defined as sexual harassment, comments being made to them here in NHS, feeling uncomfortable in certain teachers' classes, um, feeling uncomfortable coming and say, saying that they were feminist or um, relating to being feminist based on the kind of societal pressures that they're experiencing in the building. I mean, it was a pretty common thread across the, uh, I can't remember how many sessions we ran, three or four sessions where um, independently not seeing the previous answers were giving us consistently the same answers that they were experiencing um, societal pressures to conform to a certain, you know, uh, view of what it is to be a woman, not just in, you know, the United States, but here in Needham and that there were certain things tied to that and that also that they were, were experiencing um, sexual harassment and, and those types of environments and that they didn't all feel comfortable here in NHS. That was a pretty consistent theme. And it wasn't something I noticed overtly in my classrooms, um, but it was pretty eye-opening to hear that from students. And uh, they were mostly anonymous surveys as well. So, right. yeah. Allie, in, in your role as an administrator here, and, and Mary Jane, your role as a guidance counselor, you, you know, you see, I was happy to hear uh, Caroline say that she sees all of you as role models. I think that's absolutely the case. Um, and yet you have different roles within the school. And so, Mary Jane, I know you hear in, in your office some, some different stories and, and some difficult things. And Allie, I know that that's the case too, especially if you have to sit down with some students and, and discipline them or work with their families. Um, is that issue then that is coming up that, that some students not feeling uh, safe or um, feeling concerned about how they can, you know, experience high school fully? Is that something that you've heard, Mary Jane, in, in, in your office? And, and what does that look like? It's definitely something that I think I can speak for all the counselors that we <laughs> hear. Um, I feel like one of the things we come up against on a fairly regular basis is students, especially the, the girls, saying, well, I don't want to get so-and-so in trouble about this. And they have difficulty, they can identify that they're not comfortable with something that happened, but they have a lot of difficulty with the idea that so, somebody might actually get in trouble. And so helping them work through that um, is a challenge. And, and helping them understand that it's not their responsibility whether or not this person gets into trouble you know, that's someone else's responsibility to take on, but they don't have to, they don't have to just sit and let this happen idly. Um, and so just helping them really process that through so that they don't, they don't, they're not victimized a second time. And is, is in your experience or any of your experiences that perhaps if working with that young woman to, to explain that she's not the one at fault or the one who's going to get somebody in trouble may help someone else, perhaps a young man, actually address an issue early rather than before it's too late. I mean, is that that's something that we're trying to do? I think so, because I also think that we have to define for our students, like, what is harassment? A lot of students think they're just joking, and they're, they're sort of playing off what they see happening in the bigger world not recognizing that actually this is not something that's okay and until we address it with students and actually name it for for what it is for both females and for males then the problem will grow and there's a lot of risk associated with not addressing it with you know with kids who are the, the offenders um, because then they think it's okay and then they go out into the world doing something right. that we haven't taught them is actually not okay right what so what do we hear what, what do we hear that boys may say at, 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 at Needham High School um, that might be offensive or that might be problematic? So what? In the classroom, I've like personally witnessed um, boys and very occasionally girls, but people talking and making specific comments about um, like someone they're attracted to and their body and very specific comments about like certain elements about their body that wouldn't be considered like either PG or like safe for like work and or school and things that like the person who's talking about it they'll just joke about it and they'll laugh it off and say that oh it's fine and I didn't mean it or they'll say things um, such as like oh like it's okay like I wasn't actually going to do this or I didn't 
actually mean it. And by them just trying to validate their own um, feelings and their sayings, it's um, treating, it's, they're trying to teach themselves that it's totally fine to do whatever they want and say whatever they want, when in reality it can make someone extremely uncomfortable and it can make them like unwilling to be in class or unwilling to stay and go to school because of some of the things that they've said. Do our teachers and our staff have the skill set, the time, the wherewithal to address that when it comes up in class? I mean, how? So, okay. we have been, um, since the moment of solidarity, and it has sort of unleashed all of this energy and talk about gender in the schools and, and what it means and what it looks like and what's actually happening. And I think it touched a nerve um, for a lot of people. And I think the conversations have been interesting. But one thing that came out of, I've had actually had several conversations with teachers. We've done a lot of work in this school around um, becoming more culturally proficient and understanding what that means and what that looks like. And as an English teacher, I'm thinking about language frequently. And we've had conversations about, I feel really um, well equipped from, from actually the training I've received it, through this district <coughs> to pick up on microaggressions, racial microaggressions. Um, and I'd like to think that through my lived experience as a woman, I can pick up on what those are when they are about <coughs> gender. But I think it, it could be helpful just to, to talk about what are the really subtle ways that this looks like? What are the really subtle ways that this sounds like? Because as a woman in her mid thirties, I've almost become used to some of these phrases. Yeah. Um, and condition to them, and I'd like to not have that be the case for my I'm, students. I'm going to push you for a second, I don't, and if it's uncomfortable, then I apologize and you don't have to respond. What's a phrase that is subtle that you hear at Needham High School from students or, or a colleague? I, I mean, that could be, that's uncomfortable. I think one really common one that happens more frequently is boys in particular calling their friends you're acting like a girl mm -hmm. or don't be such a girl which okay. I think has you've heard how many times in you know your life and in the last couple of months I've actually spoken to a couple of students about saying that and they're joking with their friends and they don't it, it they are using it to kind of like you know it does have a meaning but I don't think that they are thinking of the bigger context and I've noticed that's something where maybe a few years ago, students would say to each other on the side, and I wouldn't call my attention. But I think that's a really common one. Yeah. I don't think it even has to be like a saying. I think it can literally just be like a look or like an action. Like I've talked to a lot of girls when it starts getting warm and when they start wanting to wear like skirts or like shorts. I know there are people at the school who literally like don't want to bring, like wear those things to school because they're afraid that like boys are going to stare at them or someone's going to make a comment about their body. And, like, that's just not something someone should be afraid of when they're going into their school. I personally do that every time that we have colder weather. I absolutely love wearing dresses and rompers, but due to some of my body features, I feel like I can't do that because of the comments that I've received and because of the way that I'm treated and looked at. Because when I'm trying to have a conversation with someone and if I'm looked up and down, I feel absolutely demeaned and it's disgusting to me. And I'm just trying to have a civil discussion, and I feel like that I'm not being taken seriously because of the way that people are looking at me or they're talking about me behind my back or to my face. And I find it honestly horrifying that I can't dress in the way that I want because if I know that I'll go and be uncomfortable in school because I'm wearing pants and a shirt instead of wearing like a dress or something that'll be cool and I'll feel comfortable in just because I'm scared of someone saying, oh, look at her body or oh, look at this aspect of her, then... I feel like that's very like unacceptable. Ellie, I, I, my understanding is, my experience is that Needham High School in general, I think folks would perceive, I, I certainly perceive it as a safe and supportive learning environment for staff and for students. Um, this conversation, you know, makes me think a little bit that at times, for some, and it depends, I suppose, who and when, 
that folks aren't necessarily feeling that way. In your experience as, as an administrator, as you, as, you, as you see a range of behaviors and students and families, is it, it is a safe school. I think we can, we can feel that way at, at the bottom line, but is it, what are some of the issues that you've seen that, that maybe take away from some of that security, your sense of security and support? Sure. So in general, yes, I believe it is a safe school, and we, we take pains to make sure that we are doing everything we can to support our students and our staff. And there are certainly times when students come to us, as Mary Jane said, um, you know, sometimes confidentially, sometimes just for advice, sometimes with a specific report or complaint. Um, and those come from students. Sometimes they come from teachers or staff members, and sometimes they come from parents. Sometimes they come from a friend of a student who is coming to say, here's what's happening. I'm worried about my friend. They're not feeling comfortable coming forward about it, but this is the situation. Um, so it definitely happens. It's happened over the years, and it's it's certainly happening recently. I think more and more as people are more attuned to um, you know what's going on in our society and are more aware of of these situations and feeling more empowered to come forward and to talk about it and to get some help with it. We hope that our structures and our policies and all of our, our processes are in place to support the student and to make it a fair learning experience for everybody. And of course, at times, there are situations that you know, as a result of an investigation and a determination that do result in disciplinary consequences for students. Mm -hmm. and, and they should, if, if someone is violating a school norm or a school rule or is as uncomfortable as that may, may be. Katie uses the term touched a nerve, and, and perhaps that has prompted some people to say, hey, I, this isn't right, and I do want to talk about it, um, as uncomfortable as it may be. So I, what are some of the things that we can do at Needham High School. We have programs and curriculum wellness classes, uh, particularly in grades 6 through 12 that deal with relationships, for example. But there may be other things that we can be doing or paying attention to. I know, Liz, for example, Take Back the Night is, a, is an activity um, that occurs. Maybe you can share what Take Back the Night is about, but I'd also like to hear about what are some other things that we need to do or be paying attention to. Sure, yeah. Take Back the Night is a student-led group um, and our mission is to spread awareness about domestic and sexual abuse and intimate partner violence and really work toward its prevention and educate um, students and staff about those issues. And so every year we have an event. Um, this year it's Thursday, November 15th from 6 to 9 in the Needham High Cafeteria where survivors come and share their stories. And we have um, musical performances by some of the a cappella groups here. We have food and door prizes. Um, and really it's about um, spreading awareness of this issue and informing everyone about the resources that are out there um, if, if they've experienced something like this or know someone who's going through um, this type of abusive relationship. And that's, um, what do we, we expect a, uh, who, who's the audience? Who typically comes to take back tonight? Typically the audience, this is my second year as, um, as co-advisor and last year the audience was mainly um, group members and their families and um, we had some uh, community members come as well. The audience is really everyone I'm hoping uh, to get a greater staff turnout this year. Um, and so the audience is really anyone in the Needham community, um, but we would love to get more students, especially uh, more male students showing up. We'd like to expand. Um, currently, the, the group is predominantly female, but we, we want to emphasize that this is not just a female issue. Yeah, well, that, that so it's on Thursday, November 5th, 15th. Correct. 7 p.m. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. I'll repeat that again before we're done. <laughs> Thursday, November 15th is 6 p.m. So that... I do want to know what else we can be doing, but I, here's, here's the other piece too I'm thinking about is that, and you, you, said, you said this, um, this is not just about the young women and the girls, this is about the boys and the young men mm -hmm. of, 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 um, of Needham High School, uh, staff and students. So what, what, what do we need to be doing to support the young men of Needham High School to help them gain some awareness and some ownership and responsibility and accountability I think one of the things that we've started to do, I know, in the English department is um, using the what's called the feminist lens. It's basically just looking at gender and literature is that we're starting to have conversations on 
um, what does it mean to be a man? What is, how do we define manhood in our society or in the text that we're reading? And I think bringing in more contemporary texts, um, articles, um, and having those kind of really difficult conversations. If we're asking male students to talk about maleness and masculinity in front of their peers, that's hard to do, um, but that's meaningful work in many ways. And I think the more we do that, the more that we're comfortable um, as a school, as a culture, and as a society, having those conversations and looking critically at what does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be a woman um, in America today? What are some other things that, that can be happening um, or you'd like to see more of that is happening? I think defining terms. Like obviously, what does that mean? Like defining terms like what is consent, like what is sexual harassment, what is sexual assault, like what are things, like what things fall under this category because I think a lot of things that happen are due to ignorance and not due to malicious intent. It's really just people being like, like what Emily said earlier, like, oh, this is just like a joke that I have with this person, but that's not how it's perceived. Mm -hmm. And so I think obviously defining stuff like that is part of like our health curriculum, but I think there needs to be more of an emphasis on it. And I think people need to just be, by talking about it, we need to get more comfortable in talking about it. And I think defining terms is the first step to doing that. So working with all of what you're saying, um, I've been working personally with Ms. Cox and a lot of the administration on creating a presentation so that um, it'll bring awareness to sexual assault and sexual harassment as well as uh, prevention and what to do to go about steps on um, either reporting it or where to go and what to do if you find yourself in a situation in which either you've been uncomfortable or you've become a victim or something has happened to you in which you would be considered a victim so that you can go about reporting it and or um, getting the health uh, measures that you need necessary um, for yeah, your safety. Who is this being presented to? Who is the um, presentation for? So this will be ideally we're working towards having um, the communal experience during our one day. Um, okay. So that'll, I will work with, I'm working with a speaker from Framingham and she's, um, she works with the group Voices Against Violence. And so there are domestic violence and um, a sexual assault and rape crisis centers so that they can work with any victims and or, well, anyone that feels like they need help and trying to get them as much help as they need. And so we're going to have a speaker from there come and we'll have three sessions throughout the entire day. And um, so that'll be happening on our one day. On the one day. And will, will teachers be able to experience that as well? So anyone who would like okay, to go is good, able to good. go. And that includes guidance and any department that would like to go. So this is a, this is a big issue. Yes. Um, there's a lot more for us to talk about. And I... It, gender equity, sexual assault, sexual harassment. Um, these are real issues for the students of Needham High School, um, the male and female students, for the staff at, at, at Needham High School, and in our community. We're, mm -hmm. we're not unique. Um, we are part of a larger community, I think, Chris, as you said earlier. Um, so what I've heard is that, uh, and, and I, I appreciate the conversation, um, you know, we, we, a moment of solidarity um, which was prompted by some, some recent current events, uh, really has, as Katie suggests, touched a nerve and really made some people say, hey, what, we have to kind of pay attention to this. Um, and it's okay to pay attention to this because we want to make sure we have a, a safe learning environment for all of our students every single day. Um, that's important for the community to know. It's also important to know that we can use the curriculum. There can be programs like One Day and there need to be ongoing conversations about this issue within the community, within classrooms, on, on athletic teams, um, with, uh, with on, within uh, the musical, and, and just within the community about these issues of, of gender equity and, and okay. assault. Um, and then if folks in the community would like to participate in, in learning a little bit more about what's going at Needham High School, stay tuned because I have a feeling a lot more will be happening, but take back the night is scheduled for Thursday, November 15th at 6 p.m. in the Needham High School cafeteria, and that's an opportunity for um, the entire community to come together and learn more about this issue of dating violence and, and um, sexual assault and, and uh, with an emphasis on teens. And I will put a challenge in to all the young men of Needham High School 
to uh, make a showing, to participate in and come and learn more about how we can work together uh, with the young women um, of Needham High School to make this a, an environment that we're all proud of and that we all feel safe and supported in. Thank you very much for the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it.